if you look past the images commonly associated with South Korea these days, such as the latest model of Samsung mobile phone, romantic TV series, warm, kind-hearted men, and boy or girl groups showcasing their exciting music and dance moves, you'll see another side of this country, which isn't showcased internationally, an aspect that reveals the frailty of old age, loneliness, and poverty, as well as illnesses that come with aging including memory loss. As we walk into the kitchen, filled with sounds of kitchenware in use and the smell of food, dozens of elderly people are enjoying their lunch. This isn't a restaurant, but rather the kitchen of a Christian church that provides care for poor and lonely elderly people who live in a country with one of the world's highest economic growth rates. Shin Sun Yang, an elderly person who has come to get help from the church, told us that she came here alone and had to catch two trains with a total travel time of over an hour. While another elderly person, Lee Sun Sun, told us that she has a daughter who got married and moved out. Her husband passed away a long time ago, so she's been alone for quite some time. She thinks the church provides valuable social services and the priest has been very supportive. According to the World Bank, South Korea is the world's most rapidly aging society, which is widely expected to become a super-aged society with an elderly population of 20% soon. Nearly half of the Korean elderly live in poverty though, with no income, savings or support. Lee Soon Sun said that although she receives a pension, it's not enough on which to live. Luckily, her son-in-law helps with the expenses. For Shin Soon Yang, however, the only income she receives is a pension of about 200,000 won, or approximately 148 US dollars per month. And it's hardly enough, considering she also has to pay taxes and utility bills. That's why she's come here. These are the lives of some of the elderly here, whose stories inspired a film which profoundly touched people's emotions. The Bacchus Lady is a South Korean cinematic masterpiece, which chronicles the life of a solitary elderly woman, compelled to engage in prostitution in public parks as a means of survival. According to Chang Chung Yun, the priest at the church, the real-life experiences of some elderly are accurately reflected in the Bacchus Lady film. South Korea is home to a significant elderly population who live in solitude, devoid of family support, grappling with ailments, lacking a place to turn to and bereft of assistance. This church was established with the primary purpose of providing them with support. Over the past 17 years, this sanctuary has welcomed over 10,000 elderly individuals, with close to 1,100 of them choosing to be baptized. They convened for prayer sessions three times a week, and presently approximately 150 elderly individuals frequent the church daily. Prostitution is illegal here in South Korea. Nevertheless, we also observed many older prostitutes waiting for customers in the park. The South Korean people's attitudes towards them are mixed. Some see them as destroying the country's culture, while many believe these elderly prostitutes are a wound in society that is waiting to be healed. Pastor Chang also told us that in South Korea, approximately 5,000 elderly people commit suicide each year. That's nearly 14 per day. It has the highest suicide rate of any developed country and possibly in the world. Dementia is also a problem. When a husband or wife falls ill and can't take care of the other, in some tragic cases, they might decide to end their partner's life. There was a case where a husband killed his wife and then attempted suicide but failed. He wasn't sentenced to the death penalty, instead he was imprisoned for three years. Society can't entirely blame him. Social conditions forced him to act in such a way. It's truly shameful that these tragedies are actually happening. After the Korean War, which all but destroyed the country and the lives of millions, 
This generation worked hard to rebuild the nation. As a result, South Korea has become one of the most advanced countries in the world. As time marches on, however, these individuals have aged, and the economic and social landscapes are rapidly evolving. These elderly people face the grave threat of poverty, primarily stemming from a labor market that enforces early retirement, leaving them with inadequate savings to maintain a decent quality of life in the present and foreseeable economic climate. This predicament is exacerbated by challenges within the pension and welfare system, as well as the diminishing capacity of families to provide care for their elderly members, driven by shifting economic circumstances and changing values concerning filial responsibility. Therefore, more than half of these elderly individuals fall into poverty. Left with no income, no savings and no refuge, many decide to commit suicide. In addition to providing food, the church also offers comfort and healing to the elderly. Pastor Chang recounted the poignant tale of an elderly gentleman residing in a modest apartment with a meager monthly income of roughly 100,000 won, equivalent to around 74 US dollars. Overwhelmed by despair, he contemplated the taking of his own life. Upon learning of his dire situation, the church extended a helping hand, covering his expenses. Today, he faithfully attends church every day and has been baptized. The church remains dedicated to providing him with the utmost support and care. This church is just a modest glimpse into another facet of South Korean society, exemplifying its ongoing commitment to embrace and support its elderly population. Migrating to an aging society presents many challenges, especially in dealing with diseases like dementia. According to the current State of Dementia 2022 report, released by the Ministry of Health and Welfare, one in ten Koreans over the age of 65 suffers from the condition. The number of dementia patients over 65 years old was 935,086, and by 2050, the number of elderly people with dementia will have increased to 3,150,000 people. To address this, the South Korean government has established dementia care centers in all 25 districts of Seoul. This is one such center. Kim Cha-in, the deputy director of the dementia care center, mentioned that individuals aged 60 and over are welcome to undergo testing. While people over 70 can undergo testing, their primary focus is on those aged 60 and up. The diagnostic process begins with a comprehensive review of the person's medical history and interviews aimed at evaluating the probability of the disease, which are followed by targeted tests. We don't miss out on the opportunity to try the preliminary screening. 100 minus 7 equals... Uh, 100 minus 7, 7. 93. From there, minus 7. 86. <laughs> minus 7 again. 79. Minus 7 again. 72. And minus 7 again for the last time. 71. 71? I'm very bad in that. I keep, keep trying, keep trying. Yeah. From 72 minus uh, 7. From 72. Okay, 72. Oh, 말하면 안 돼요. 아, 그걸 기억해야 돼. 아, I should not. From 72 minus 7, so 75. No, 65. Yeah, 맞아요. Sorry. And then 57. It's done. The good news is there are no symptoms of this disease yet. An elderly person who doesn't pass the initial examination means that they are more likely to develop symptoms of Alzheimer's and should be referred to a doctor for further assessment of the disease's progress and severity. Alzheimer's patients are given stickers providing personal information 
and wear smartwatches to communicate with family or caregivers in case they get lost, suffer memory loss or have an accident. A sign for Alzheimer's patients who wander away from home is a must at the center. Alzheimer's disease typically develops gradually and may not be noticeable in its early stages. This condition is characterized by the progressive degeneration of neurons and a reduction in certain neurotransmitters within the brain. It often emerges over the course of many years and persists until they pass away. The most significant risk factor for Alzheimer's is advancing age. While all elderly individuals are at an increased risk of developing the disease, it's crucial to understand that not everyone who ages will develop the condition. Various factors, including genetics, lifestyle and overall health, influence an individual's susceptibility to the disease. The patients in this room are those whose symptoms are not yet severe or have just appeared. There is still no medicine or treatment to cure Alzheimer's. The center's primary approach in dealing with the disease is brain management, aiming to maintain brain function and delay its deterioration for as long as possible through various activities. This group of elderly people is learning to fold paper into various shapes according to the instructions of their caregivers. This paper folding not only means the elderly use both hands simultaneously, thereby engaging the muscle system, but it also stimulates the nervous system and various parts of the brain to work in tandem. Folding paper, according to step-by-step -step instructions, also helps assess each elderly person's ability to remember the caregiver's instructions. One of the caregivers at this dementia care center told us that people can stimulate brain activity by using both hands, which is why they implemented this program. During the training he attended, he had the opportunity to see MRI images of the brain and noticed genuine changes in the patient's brain after being stimulated by activity. In this class, participants not only distinguish different colors, but also engage in various sensory exercises. Patients here focus on group activities because an important thing in slowing down the deterioration of the brain is interacting with others. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. The big challenge of dealing with the aging society in South Korea, especially a health-threatening problem like Alzheimer's, is not money, but attitude. Most people understand that Alzheimer's is a normal condition that occurs with aging. In fact, though, Alzheimer's is a type of disease, not natural or age-related dementia. South Korean society as a whole still has a negative attitude towards patients suffering from brain diseases. Therefore, they don't see the need for and don't dare to undergo an examination by a medical professional for fear of being stigmatized by society. A traditional way to uh, coping the dementia problem is the uh, just just wait and then they uh, get severely ill mm -hmm. they just care them mm -hmm. it's a traditional way but uh, our uh, emphasize is uh, for the earlier stage and uh, make people with dementia uh, stay in the uh, milder mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. uh, we reduce we can reduce the uh, their personal and family burden. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also uh, reduced the uh, social burden mm -hmm. uh, and the burden of the care system. We, we reduced them. So uh, uh, care is important and early detection and management also important. Uh, so the early detection, through early detection, we can uh, reduce the burden of the care system. In addition to societal attitudes, social isolation aggravates the condition of Alzheimer's patients because many elderly people live alone. Therefore, South Korea has a place for the elderly to spend time together to relieve loneliness by creating a quality environment. Elderly individuals who visit can choose from various activities based on their skills and interests, such as painting. 
This is the room where the elderly come for watercolour painting, to learn brush writing, and to sketch trees representing the four seasons. Ha Seung Jia, one of the elderly individuals who visits the centre, told us that coming here allows her to meet friends and engage in painting. During the holidays, she doesn't know where to go, but coming here gives her a hobby and an opportunity to learn. It brings her great joy. When she wakes up in the morning, she looks forward to attending the classes here. Next to the painting and drawing room is a room which many elderly individuals favour. Table tennis is a sport that is also highly effective brain exercise because it requires players to use every part of their body in coordinated movements. All activities are designed and chosen to stimulate and develop the brain directly, including playing billiards. Wang Pongshik, another elderly visitor to the centre, said that billiards is a very delicate sport. It demands intense concentration and even involves using geometric principles. According to him, it's a sport that requires the utmost focus. At home, there isn't much to do, but the centre offers a variety of activities. He's made many friends and is truly happy here. Although the government has invested a significant amount in elderly care, many elderly citizens still can't access these services for various reasons. Therefore, centres like this serve to bridge that gap. The atmosphere in the church became more solemn as the priest led the prayers. As we listened to the low-pitched murmur in Korean, we couldn't help but wonder about the thoughts and hopes deep within the minds of those communicating with God. They might be hoping for their next meal, medical expenses for themselves, their children, their relatives or someone close to them, or reflecting on death and the past. An aging population is a challenge many developed countries face. In South Korea, however, problems are nuanced and unique, distinguishing them from other societies, because the problems of the elderly come with loneliness and poverty. If South Korea's economic and social system continues on its current path, the goal of an ideal elderly individual, aging gracefully, surrounded by children and relatives, living healthily and in peace, and departing this world in peace without worries, may remain elusive.